welcome back everybody this is always back with another video on the channel in this video i'll show you how you can build admin dashboard template using angular 12 with angular material this is a very very easy to build and it's going to be fully responsive there's a lot of templates that you can buy online which has a similar sort of dashboard template but let me show you how easy it is to build in just five to ten minutes also if you have any development work related to angular you can contact me on my email which is in the description of this video without further ado let's get started let me show you what we're going to be building in this video so here's a dashboard you can see we got the top bar we got the sidebar and it's fully responsive so if i reduce the width of it all the way here you will see now we got this breadcrumb button there click on that it'll give you the sidebar now also this is fully responsive dashboard and we're going to be building in this in 10 minutes let's get started let's start by creating a new project i'm going to make sure that i have a node installed and also ng space dash dash version that's the angular cli if you haven't installed those then you should not be watching this tutorial you can follow that angular crash course that i did which basically will get you up and running with angular in very less time so yeah so this is just an exercise so that's why we're going to stretch up into it and i start by creating an angular new project i'll say g template let's do routing yes select scss and then just wait for the packages to be installed packages are installed now we're gonna go and open that folder in vs code so i'll do npin template and we are in that folder now now i am using a remote server to do all the development you can do that locally as well so don't worry about what is this ssh192168 next we are going to run our code i'll use npn run start command and that will start our application on port 4200. Because I'm using this remote server, I'll have to port forward it. And VS Code does that automatically for me. So if you go to ports, you can see it is uh, forwarding the port to localhost 4200. And at this stage, I should be able to open Chrome browser and I should be able to run the application. And now as you can see, I'm accessing this localhost 4200 and we can see the application running there. All right, let's go back to the code. I'm going to go to app-component.html file. I would like to just cut this bit first, select all and get rid of everything here, which was like boilerplate code, and paste the router outlet. Now, if I go to Chrome, our application is blank. We can start building on the top of blank application now. Another thing I would like to do before we go and build the dashboard stuff, I would like to create a button here. So I'll use this a dash button oh, because Angular Material is not implemented yet, so we won't do that. So I'll just use a button. And inside the button, I'll use this click event. So add this parenthesis around, and we're going to use the function name log me. All right, it's going to throw an error because it doesn't exist. So let's open app component.ts file and let's create that function there. I would like to use log me and simply just do a log there, testing. And I'm gonna click on here and you can see here we have this red mark there, which means the debugger should work now. Well, it won't because we need to start debugging on specific port. So I'll go to debugger, click on run and debug select chrome and then once you get the configuration here you will change the port to let's say 4200 all right let's save this now if i look at the bottom here there's an option called launch chrome against localhost admin template and this is where i want to click but i want to make sure that my port is you know 4200 click on that button there and then select this launch chrome against localhost and we just wait for almost 30 seconds, 15 seconds, depends on your computer. And you should have another Chrome opening. And at this stage, you should have the debugger. So if I go and click on that button there, there's a little button there, but that's too small. So we'll go back to VS Code, app component.html file, and I'll just say, log me. If I go to Chrome now, you'll see the button there. Well, this is actually not the Chrome that we were expecting because the Chrome that we launched 
is different. Let me show you. This is the one that is, you know, attached to the debugger. So if I click on log me, you'll see it'll take us back to VS Code and I can do a debugging right in the code. I'm gonna stop the server and I'm going to go to Firefox and in Angular Material, we're gonna find guides. Click on guides, getting started. Here's a command to install Angular Material. So just copy that bit. Go back to VS Code and we're just gonna paste that here. Press return, enter on a Windows and here it says package material will be installed. You wanna proceed, I'll say yes. And it's gonna take like 30 seconds or so to install all the packages, but it also asks you which theme you would like to use. So by default, there are four themes available in Angular material, Indigo Pink or Deep Blue Purple. You know, you can choose whatever you like or you can change them later as well. So I'll just go with the default one and I will install the typography as well. Set the browser animation, yes and it is now installing all the packages and also it actually updated all the files for us so if you look at here in our angular.json this was added this is basically a theme file that it added and we also have in the package.json where it added these two things all right and in the text.html it we have some typographic links we go to style and this was added there as well app component and app component. So these are our changes. And in Angular uh, app module, we have these two modules imported, Angular routing and browser animation. So basically this is just a Git that is tracking it. We don't really have to worry about that. All right, at this stage, I'm gonna go back to Firefox, go to guides, go to semantics, and all the way down, there's a dashboard semantic that we're gonna use. And also we're gonna use this navigation semantic. So first of all, let's grab this line, go back to VS Code, paste that, and change the component name to whatever you like. I'll change that to navigation. All right, what it did is it actually added this component, also modified our app module file. So if you look at, we have this, uh, actually we got this, navigation component added to declaration, which means we can use that in app module. All right, so let's go back to Firefox. We need a dashboard semantic. I'll just copy this, go back and terminal, paste that. It's gonna expect the new name. So we'll do dashboard. Okay, so we got another dashboard component added here, but also we have the dashboard in the file explorer, as you can see. Our application is running. I'm going to click on this button here, which will launch a Chrome. I already have that running. I'm gonna refresh that. And you can see we've got the log me button there. Let's go back to VS Code and we're gonna to go to app component. And instead of this button here, I would like to use navigation component. So I'll just use the navigation component. Let's take a look at the page. And now you can see we got this navigation component. Let me zoom in a bit. It is completely responsive. So if I just reduce its width, you will see we have this icon which I can click on and that will just bring up this sidebar. All right, so at this stage we have this navigation component. Go back to VS Code and within this navigation component, we're gonna go into navigation component HTML file. And right here, it says add your content here. Okay, I'm going to just use app-dashboard component there. Save the file, we go back to Chrome, and now you can see we got this dashboard component implemented on the right spot. So here's our sidebar, top is our toolbar, and then we got some of the dashboard component stuff like, you know, properly responsive cards here. As you can see here. All right, so as you can see, we don't really have to write any code. We just use the default semantics of Angular to build this responsive dashboard, which has the sidebar, top bar, and then the area where you can start putting your own components. So in the future series, I will do more tutorials around how to add routing to it. Basically, if you want to have multiple pages like here, 
you can click on the link one link two link three to go to different pages within this area i'll do the separate tutorials for that but as you can see here you don't really have to go and buy a template online for admin dashboard in the next video i will create another tutorial which will include the routing from one page to the second page to the third page so stay tuned for that subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up if you really liked it thanks for watching and i talk to you guys in the next one cheers bye